Uh, welcome to uh, the seminar, uh, Geometry Arithmetic and Differential Equations of, uh, of Periods. Today we have a kind of different activity in this seminar. We have uh, uh, the, uh, our guest, Professor uh, Ilyashenko, and we are going to have a kind of uh, uh, informal uh, discussion or uh, the interview with him. Okay, uh, welcome, Professor Ilyashenko. Uh, and so let's uh, start the, the interview. Uh, well, uh, please tell us about your first mathematical experiences. Uh, they were fostered mainly by which people and uh, what, uh, who, uh, who were your first mathematical teachers? Uh, um, my father was uh, a physicist uh, and uh, one of those who constructed the uh, jet uh, planes. Uh, he gave me in my early childhood classical uh, mathematical problems even from the 19th century. Uh, at school, I had uh, one of the best mathematical teachers in Moscow uh, named Ivan uh, Moroskin. Uh, he uh, passed uh, the Second World War. Uh, he was uh, an officer, I guess, an artillery officer. Uh, he was, on one hand, very tough and uh, uh, he made uh, an impression of thunder uh, on uh, his students. On the other hand, he had a talent uh, to erase and develop the creative capacities of his students. Uh, he taught me uh, from uh, for six years, from the fifth grade uh, to the tenth, when I. Uh, uh, ended the high school, and uh, in the previous six years, uh, he taught Arnold, and uh, there were several other uh, celebrated mathematicians whom he um, taught. Uh, so, under his influence, um, I had my uh, first successes in Olympiads and decided uh, to become a mathematician. Oh. So this is about my first uh, teachers. I see. I see. So uh, and then, uh, how, uh, when was your first feeling of uh, discovering mathematics and there to do a kind of serious mathematics and to create something? Uh, I will tell you not about serious discoveries. Uh, the first uh, problem that I stated and solved myself uh, was how much seconds are there in one hour. I posed this problem to myself uh, when I was uh, of year six, and I remember quite well how hardly I was uh, solving it. At that time, I had no idea about the associative law of multiplication. I just added uh, 60 plus 60, but with some simplifications. So, when I resulted uh, in 20 terms, uh, I understood that I will add this three times and get the correct answer. So, this is my first mathematical recollection. Uh, my second recollection is related to my sixth grade uh, in the school, so age 11 or 12. Mm, I was greatly in favor about the formula of the difference of squares. Uh, and using this formula, I understood uh, how to construct all the Pythagorean triples. So these are my first uh, experiences. And uh, a year later, uh, when I was uh, 13, uh, in the seventh grade, quite unexpectedly for me, uh, I became uh, the uh, first winner uh, of the Moscow Mathematical Olympiad, and uh, this was my first uh, serious success uh, at the school time. 
maybe at that time the mathematical Olympiad uh, they were just in Russia or it was international? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, there were no international Olympiads at that time. It was uh, 1957. Um, and uh, it was Moscow Mathematical Olympiad, uh, very high level uh, Olympiad, probably uh, the unique uh, or definitely the highest Olympiad in Russia. I see, okay. So let's uh, go forward. Uh, okay, uh, this is my favorite question. I did my PhD thesis on your uh, 1969 article. The original of limit cycles on their perturbation of uh, equation. And uh, so I would be very interested to know from where this article started. And, uh, and in particular, it, ha it appeared this notion of abelian integrals in differential equations. Okay. Uh, allow me to give you uh, an extended answer and uh, to start with uh, your very question that is with the moment when I met uh, you and visited Brazil and uh, had a discussion with Alcides. Uh, at that time, I had a unique experience uh, in my life. Uh, it appeared that in my PhD thesis, I proved uh, a theorem, it was stated and proved, but I did not know the correct statement of this theorem. And Alcides did explain me uh, the statement. And the statement was that the Hamiltonian plane uh, in the space of polynomial uh, vector fields is an irreducible component of the center uh, algebraic manifold. And uh, I gave another statement of this theorem, which was uh, not at all uh, as impressive. Uh, and I was uh, happy to know that. So this is the first part of my uh, answer. Now back uh, to uh, abelian integrals. Um, in the 60s, uh, uh, the uh, work of Petrovsky and Landis, uh, which was published in the 50s, uh, became in a center of interest uh, of, of Shafarevich, of Arnold, uh, later of Gelfand. Uh, people like Arnold and Novikov uh, tried to understand it. And um, I was uh, a student of uh, Landis uh, in 63. Mm, uh, I was his student. And uh, he gave me a series of problems uh, addressed uh, to rediscover, reproduce their proof with Petrovsky. It is a different story. But uh, in the center of these uh, problems uh, was uh, the perturbation of an integrable equation. Uh, later on, I will speak about the petrovsky landis strategy. Now I want to say only that uh, Petrovsky and Landis, as well as Arnold later, preferred to uh, deal with integrable equations uh, whose phase curves were rational. That is, the leaves of the corresponding complex foliation were punctured spheres. And therefore, all the integrals uh, that occur uh, in the, uh, say, poincare uh, pantriagin criterion, a few words about it later, uh, where uh, integral that might be explicitly calculated with the help of residues. And when I was a fourth year student, uh, I was studying Riemann surfaces, learning Riemann surfaces at that time. I remember that I understood that if you seriously want uh, uh, to um, understand the perturbation of integrable equations, then you have to take 
polynomials with the, the level curves of a uh, high degree and uh, to deal uh, with the perturbations uh, of the equations uh, with this uh, phase curve curves. I remember even now uh, that I was sort of afraid, sort of horrified by the uh, difficulty of the uh, problem. I had no idea how to handle it. And uh, it was one of the starting points for me. Another starting point uh, was the following. Uh, in the third year, I attended uh, one uh, topics course given by Arnold. Uh, Arnold was very young, very expressive. Uh, we were uh, by names, uh, he uh, was six years uh, older than uh, I am. So I called him Dima, he called me Yulik. And I remember how he comes after the lectures, uh, wraps his hands after the uh, chalk washed, and asks me, uh, Yulik, Yulik, uh, what do you want to do with Petrovsky Landis? At that time, uh, the mistake was not yet found. Uh, I answered, I want uh, to find uh, a simpler proof. And he said, uh, one should, uh, uh, one should uh, apply the Goulois theory. Uh, this phrase might uh, sound like a puzzle uh, to the people who did not discuss Galois theory with Arnold. Uh, what uh, the uh, Galois groups and what finite fields have to do with the subject. But for Arnold at that time, the Galois theory was uh, the monodromic group of a Riemann surface. And uh, uh, his hint was to uh, study something that is not univalent, uh, that has branches, that uh, has a monodromy. And uh, it was a very strong advice for me. Uh, we never uh, later discussed with Arnold uh, my work about uh, abelian integrals, until I delivered it uh, in his seminar in the year of uh, 70. But these were uh, the two starting uh, points for me. Mm. My PhD was not uh, a usual uh, one. Uh, nobody uh, proposed me uh, the problem and uh, nobody advised me uh, where to go. Um, Landis was uh, uh, like a mathematical father for me, very, very attentive uh, to me, very good willing. And I remember that step by step, uh, I told him about my unfinished uh, work and uh, he gave uh, very uh, useful questions and advices. And uh, mm, in the year uh, 68, uh, the beginning of the year was uh, especially fruitful for me. Uh, I made uh, the last step. Uh, I proved that um, uh, in the modern language, uh, the intersection graph of the vanishing cycles uh, is connected. And uh, uh, this ended up uh, the construction that I was uh, doing. So uh, this is uh, about uh, the starting point uh, and the development of my investigation of abelian uh, integrals. Okay. Uh, so in the same article, we learned that uh, abelian integrals are responsible for the birth of limit cycles. And then there is this new problem, Arnold-Hilbert problem, infinitesimal problem for counting the zeros of abelian integrals. That uh, it was the reason why the name Arnold uh, appears in the title of this new problem? Uh, well, uh, I myself uh, thought about this problem in the 60s, uh, but I was uh, too humble to write about it 
in my paper of 69 because I had nothing to say uh, about the way to solve it. Uh, so um, one may say that it was written between the lines uh, of my paper of 69, but Arnold stated it uh, explicitly uh, in the middle of 70s, uh, uh, and it is called Hilbert Arnold problem. Uh, okay, so let me see. So you talked about the uh, Petrovsky Landis uh, our, uh, article, and uh, uh, which turned out to be uh, uh, wrong argument inside. Uh, what is the reason why in the area of limit cycle we have many wrong or failed arguments? Uh, I mean, uh, you think. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I okay. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, I will answer you uh, the last question and then uh, go back to the uh, Petrovsky Landis uh, paper because uh, it is related to uh, several uh, further questions. Uh, what about uh, many mistakes? I guess that there are uh, several domains in mathematics uh, where uh, the work uh, is easy to start and uh, difficult to finish. Uh, the uh, question is rather simple. Um, people understand it uh, at an, an early stage of education and it seems uh, that uh, you need uh, not very strong tools uh, to start working on it. Uh, I guess that there are several similar uh, domains, several similar problems in mathematics. Uh, I know, uh, I heard that uh, there is, uh, that uh, about the so-called discriminant problem, that is, uh, there is uh, a polynomial map uh, of the plane, uh, of the complex plane to the complex plane with the Jacobian one. Uh, is it correct that this is an automorphism? Yeah. Is it correct that it is bijective? Mm, I have heard that every year a wrong proof of the positive answer uh, occurs. Uh, another uh, problem like this, uh, I guess, is uh, the four-color problem. It is uh, very easy, and before it was uh, solved, uh, many Arano solutions uh, occurred. So I guess that uh, this is a feature of the domain, easy to enter, but uh, difficult uh, to exit, uh, and limit cycles is one of these domains. Okay. Now, uh, a few words about uh, the petrovsky landis uh, paper. Uh, in my understanding, uh, it was a part of a global approach of Petrovsky to mathematical problems. Uh, he was one of uh, those uh, whose great uh, tool was a complexifying of the problem. Uh, he has done it with uh, elliptic differential equations. He has done it with the first uh, part of the 16th Hilbert problem, and he was quite successful. And he tried to do the same with the second part of uh, the Hilbert 16th problem. Uh, his work is one of the sources of uh, the uh, growth of the domain of complex foliations. And there were uh, two uh, crucial parts uh, in this uh, work. Uh, and uh, there was a strategy that I will uh, describe uh, now. Uh, the petrovsky landis strategy is the following. Uh, let us consider the whole uh, functional space related to the problem. In our case, uh, this is a space of polynomial vector fields uh, of a given degree. And uh, suppose that uh, there is uh, some complex analog 
um, of the number of uh, real limit cycles. This is, I should say, three parts. Um, Petrovsky Landis strategy has three parts. The first part is to describe this complex analog. The, the strategy is the following. Suppose that this complex analog is very high, very large for some equation, for some vector field. Uh, then uh, one may expect that it is high for nearby vector fields. Now, Petrovsky uh, suggests uh, the complex extension, the extension in the complex domain of uh, this property. Uh, the uh, bifurcation surfaces have complex codimension one or higher. So in the complex space, they may be bypassed. Uh, the risky open sets are uh, connected. Uh, so starting with bad equations, we may travel along the whole functional space and come to a domain of so-called good equations. Good equations are those that are close to the integrable ones. And these are equations that we discussed uh, right before. And preserving uh, the uh, unexpected the large number of uh, limit cycles, we can uh, come from a bad domain to a good domain see that in the good domain, you cannot find so many limit cycles. And then uh, get to a contradiction that uh, completes uh, the uh, proof, the arguments. So it appeared that the uh, strategy was fruitful to generate uh, filial uh, domains. Say, uh, in the petrovsky landis work, there were done uh, first steps in complex foliations, uh, parallel and independent from what Hefliger have done approximately at the same time. Uh, the three, all the three steps were not completed uh, perfectly. And one of the most interesting open problems in the theory of complex foliations is so-called persistence of complex limit cycles. Can uh, complex limit cycles of polynomial equations vanish like in a blue sky catastrophe when you change the parameters? I have no uh, time to give this problem in more details. I only want to say that Bertrand de Rouen recently, some 10 years ago, with together with his uh, co-authors, Adolfo Guillot is here, um, made a very interesting contribution to the understanding of this problem. But uh, in general, the problem stays open and is one of the central problems in complex foliations from my point of view. Uh, so uh, this is about the petrovsky uh, landis uh, work. And I will uh, um, come back uh, to this a little bit later. Okay. okay. Uh, so uh, let's go to the next question. Uh, uh, tell us about your proof of finiteness theorem for limit cycles. Uh, how many years it took, uh, and uh, when did you know about uh, Eccles proof? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there was a school in Spain uh, in February, and at that school I said that uh, presently I see a gap in my proof that I am uh, feeling now. And I very strongly hope that finitely I will have an understandable text. Uh, I know that, uh, as far as I know, uh, nobody uh, gave, say, uh, a lecture course uh, along uh, my proof or a Carl's proof 
uh, of uh, the uh, finiteness theorem. I hope that this time uh, will come and I'm working on it. Uh, so when I learned about the Karls proof, uh, I learned about it uh, at the conference, at the Lumini uh, conference, uh, 1989. Uh, it was my first uh, travel uh, to uh, the West. It was very impressive because at that time the uh, Iron Curtain uh, dropped down and uh, uh, me, the person who had absolutely no possibility to quit Soviet Union and come to the Western uh, country, uh, became uh, a person free moving uh, around the world. Uh, so it was a very impressive first, uh, my first travel uh, to France. Uh, I met Jean Ecal at that conference. I learned that he has a proof uh, also. And uh, some people uh, expected that uh, we will have uh, uh, tough uh, priority uh, arguments Instead of that, uh, we became uh, and remain uh, friends. And uh, I want to say uh, that uh, I hate uh, the priority discussion and the priority passions that are uh, popular in a part of our uh, community. Uh, it uh, seems to me Mm, that uh, if a person achieved the same difficult result uh, that uh, you uh, did, mm, you should uh, greet and congratulate him, and uh, uh, that's it. Okay. So this is about my meeting with Jean Ekal. Okay. Actually, for me, even rediscovering mathematics of uh, even 100 years ago, sometimes it is good uh, for for first okay so let's go um, uh what is your what is your vision for the final solution of the uniform boundedness for limit cycles uh, uh, which tools you think uh, it must be developed and uh, with uh, what what uh, one has in which direction one has to go um i have uh one uh, hope uh, from uh, the very old uh, time uh, the hope uh, that uh, the petrovsky landis strategy uh, yet might be successful, though uh, it failed uh, all, more than 50 years ago. Mm, at present, uh, together with uh, Jaume Libre uh, and together with my uh, students, uh, Fishkin, uh, with my student uh, Alexei Fishkin, uh, we uh, get, uh, we got a quite unrealistic uh, but uh, correct uh, upper estimate of the number of limit cycles of quadratic vector field outside uh, some submanifolds in the functional space. Uh, these submanifolds, in particular, uh, consider the vector fields uh, that have uh, so-called graphics or polycycles or separatrix polygons, uh, other uh, vector fields uh, are so-called uh, singularly uh, perturbed, that is, they have curves of uh, singular points two components of the uh, vector field uh, have a common divisor. And you cannot uh, just uh, cancel this common divisor, just divide by it, because when you perturb, this divisor uh, makes a great influence on the nearby uh, vector fields now without common divisor. Uh, so uh, we uh, may come back to petrovsky landis strategy and uh, the domain, the realm of good vector fields 
is almost the whole functional space. You only need uh, to perturb the bad equations uh, to come uh, to the uh, good region and uh, to prove that you uh, did not uh, lose uh, too much uh, cycles, then you will get a contradiction because in the good uh, region the estimates is obtained. So uh, my uh, first uh, uh, conjecture, my first uh, suggestion is uh, that uh, one should uh, try uh, this part of petrovsky landis strategy. I keep it in mind, but I did not yet uh, seriously try uh, to do that. Um, what about uh, the other approaches? Um, I uh, do not uh, say uh, that I have uh, uh, serious uh, hopes on the subject. Okay. Uh, do you think any arithmetic will be involved, for example, for a kind of uh, any final solution or uh, more topological analytical methods like in uh, Landis, uh, Petrovsky Landis? Well, um, I can say uh, that uh, relations in uh, mathematics uh, may be absolutely uh, unexpected and uh, uh, that uh, quite uh, unexpected, quite fresh ideas uh, that seem to be uh, irrelevant uh, may be fruitful. Uh, but um, I myself uh, see no connections uh, with uh, Mm, arithmetics and uh, the uh, Hilbert 16th problem. I, uh, but maybe uh, something, uh, for example, you may you mentioned uh, this uh, uh, theory, and then the Galois the theory of a function field, you have this monodromy and uh, 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 Picard, uh, Picard, uh, Picard, uh, Picard Lipschitz theory, and then outside you have this classical Galois theory. So this is, there is some parallelism going on at least in the context that you already mentioned there. So uh, do you think it might be, it's, at least some parallelism might pop up and to see one one has to do in the arithmetic, uh, in the original uh, limit cycle problem? Mm. Maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, do you uh, have uh, some, um, ideas uh, more uh, elaborated than that? No, I mean, I, you just mentioned this uh, Galois, the Arnold suggestion of Galois at the end. Uh, uh, a Galois for function field is a kind of, it gives you monodromy group, but we have the, the classical Galois theory. So this might be some open up some way. Okay. Yes, yes. But that uh, I guess, it? yes. I guess that uh, uh, Arnold meant uh, the monodromy. Okay. Uh, uh, but, uh, what, uh, what do you think about studying the polynomial differential e uh, equations and uh, in a purely algebraic geometric framework with less dynamics? I mean, this is a kind of now trend also in the area of polymorphic foliations uh, that uh, you push the uh, area into more algebraic geometric framework. What is your opinion about this? Mm. I uh, do not think that uh, this is uh, the uh, this is a realistic or successful uh, direction. Uh, what about holomorphic foliations? Nesim uh, Siboni is uh, with authors uh, is uh, very successful applying. Uh, geometric uh, analytic uh, topological methods, but not uh, algebraic geometrical. Mm. On the other hand, look at uh, a theory that we can consider as a, a parallel or even model theory for uh, polynomial differential equations. I mean uh, one-dimensional uh, rational dynamics. 
uh, the dynamics of the polynomial maps. And uh, this is uh, a, a theory with many parallel uh, questions. Mm, you can uh, see that it develops uh, on the boundary of uh, complex analysis and uh, uh, dynamics, uh, dynamic, complex analysis and dynamical systems. Um, but um, algebraic geometry uh, does not help much, uh, though uh, the subject is classically algebraically geometrical, uh, the uh, first uh, thing uh, to handle is a polynomial, uh, then you uh, iterate it. And it appears that the iterates of uh, the uh, polynomial classical object of algebraic geometry uh, has not so much to do with the algebraic geometry itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Okay. So, uh, the flourishing of the holomorphic dynamics uh, shows that the success lies in a different uh, domain. Okay. Okay, maybe uh, let's go to the next question. Um, after the complexification of planar differential equations under the name holomorphic affiliation, many other problems and conjectures such as the minimal set problems have arisen. And now there are many people working on these problems without uh, interest uh, on limit cycles. What do you think about this process of getting away from the origin of mathematical uh, objects and uh, getting interested in new problems? And uh, is this process kind of natural? Or, uh, or it is better sometimes to go back to the origin of the problem from where they come? Uh, I think that... Um... Uh, this is uh, a natural way of uh, development. Um, so, uh, differential equations have uh, uh, even more uh, mighty uh, children uh, than the theory of uh, foliations. Uh, remember that uh, Sophus Lee created his uh, theory as the theory of symmetries of differential equations. So the uh, theory of Lie groups is, uh, in a sense, the daughter of differential equations. Uh, Poincaré created his analysis situs, again uh, motivated by differential equations. And this is the second uh, powerful daughter of differential equations uh, topology. Uh, both children, I think, uh, became uh, stronger and uh, more popular than uh, their uh, mother, than their uh, original theory. Uh, so this is a, a natural uh, way of development of mathematics. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, many interesting differential equations which come from nature have real numbers as time parameters. Uh, what is uh, for you a complex time and, uh, and uh, if, uh, how we can apply it to some concrete differential equation which have real time and they come from nature? Um. Uh, many uh, questions that have a uh, real origin uh, find their solution in the complex domain. Uh, for instance, uh, the first part of the Hilbert 16th problem, uh, the question about the ovals of real algebraic curves, in fact, uh, was mainly pushed forward by uh, passing to the complex domain, uh, both by Petrovsky, uh, by Arnold, and uh, followers. Uh, right now, uh, our uh, group, uh, together with the group of uh, Victor Huchstaber, uh, is involved for more than, than 10 years in an investigation of another real differential equation. Uh, this real differential equation uh, physically 
uh, is related, has a physical origin. Uh, it describes uh, the so-called uh, Josephson Junction, uh, dump Josephson Junction, uh, whatever it means. Uh, the physical uh, phenomenon, uh, superconductivity uh, in uh, the dielectrics, uh, was discovered by young Josephson, who uh, won the Nobel Prize of uh, 73 uh, for that. And uh, in the equation very popular amidst uh, the physicists uh, met in several monographs of the middle of the 20th century uh, is uh, a first order differential equation on a two torus. And it is purely real, and uh, it is not uh, integrable, but very particular. As it has uh, the physical origin, um, its uh, particularity uh, is not uh, a bad uh, thing. But uh, it is uh, an equation depending on parameters, and as usually uh, parameter depending equations on a torus, it has Arnold tongues. But the Arnold tongues grow not at every rational point as a vertex, but rather at integer points only. In uh, the famous uh, accustomed picture of Arnold's tongues, mm, you see just uh, the germs of cone-like uh, domains. Uh, the interesting question is to extend these tongues in the vertical parameters. And it appears that uh, the boundary of that the tongue is goes vertically upstairs uh, unboundedly and it uh, its boundary is uh, self intersecting and the self intersections uh, are located in a very special way uh, once again uh, physicists uh, had these pictures, had some guesses how to justify or uh, describe them. Uh, some guesses are wrong, some guesses are, are now proved rigorously mathematically. But in any case, the understanding of these uh, pictures and uh, of the uh, vertical series of self-intersection points of the Arnold tongues lies in the complex domain. Even today, uh, one hour later in my uh, two hour, uh, two uh, minus epsilon hours later in my seminar, Alexei Glutsuk will give a, a talk on the subject. And a purely real picture is justified uh, by complex methods, and it is related uh, to a differential equation that comes from physics. So this is a uh, sort of extended answer to your question. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, come to the uh, last question, and we will have uh, plenty of time for the audience uh, to. Uh, to pose a question. So, uh, if you were start and uh, to uh, if you were to start a new career, what you would choose? Mathematics or going to art, other branches of science? Uh, what you would do? <laughs> um, uh, well, I can um, answer you. Uh, sharing my personal uh, recollections, uh, and this will be a partial uh, answer. Uh, I guess uh, that uh, when I was uh, either uh, a high school student uh, of the uh, 
last classes or a freshman or sophomore. Uh, I had no family, I had no students at all, but uh, I thought that uh, a person should live in a way as uh, not to be ashamed before uh, his children and his students uh, in the future. And uh, therefore, from the very youth, uh, family and students were an important uh, life uh, task uh, for me. So if I will start my life again, I uh, again will uh, try to build a family and uh, try to build, uh, say, uh, a group of students. Um, so uh, would it be, would uh, my professional uh, business be uh, mathematics? Uh, probably uh, once again it would be, but uh, it might be uh, history, uh, it uh, might be probably even uh, literature, uh, I don't know. Uh, a person has one life uh, and uh, cannot try uh, all the uh, possibilities. Okay, uh, well, maybe, uh, what other area of mathematics you wanted to learn and maybe uh, you didn't have time, uh, uh, you would try about it, invest more uh, on, on this part of mathematics, just uh, at a cur curiosity. Probably topology, uh, algebraic geometry, uh, functional analysis, PDE, these are uh, my uh, favorite uh, domains where I do not or almost do not work. Okay, okay. I think my, uh, my questions is already finished. And so let, let's see if the audience, uh, I'm sure that uh, Sergey has questions, but of course. Uh, now we are open to question from the audience. Let me see. Somebody wants to ask question. Okay, uh, apparently there is a... Uh... Hey, no, see, Jose. Thank you, okay, uh, go ahead. I just wanted to ask a question that can be, uh, well, not stupid, not naive, but still, uh, one may argue uh, why the second part of the Hilbert's problem is so resisting to all our efforts. So, uh, so the natural thing is to ask what this problem is about. So I, I could imagine myself several possible answers. Uh, one possible answer is that uh, this is the question about the boundary behavior of analytic functions. Second uh, possible answer uh, in the spirit of what Yuli told is that we still are uh, not uh, discovered a right way to complexify, to complexify the uh, uh, Dulux problem on finite, or, well, the problem of, of limit cycles, uh, because there were uh, several possible uh, uh, definitions, and all of them either are trivially true or uh, proved false. So uh, one of those results is Yuli's theorem about infinite number of um, homologically independent uh, curves on leaves of uh, polynomial foliations. So one could imagine uh, that uh, there are uh, some other attempts to uh, formulate staying on one leg uh, what this damn problem is about, which makes it so uh, so impenetrable. Mm -hmm. uh, the question, uh, well, as I said, it, it is kind of stupid, but 
uh, from time to time I uh, used to ask, say, questions about the Riemann hypothesis, Riemann conjecture uh, to people uh, of uh, different walks of life, say, number theorists, uh, people from uh, algebraic geometry, automorphic forms, people from probability even, uh, from the probability theory, and uh, they all suggest different answers. So I would like Yuli to say uh, what is his gut feeling about this. So uh, why the hell we still cannot uh, do much about it? Uh, it's difficult uh, to answer. Uh, I never uh, tried uh, to uh, prove uh, Riemann's uh, conjecture, but when I uh, thought just about that statement, uh, I uh, felt myself um, uh, surprised uh, in a way uh, how simple the situation is and uh, how hopeless uh, the, uh, are all the attempts to prove uh, the conjecture. No, no, Yuri Sergeyevich, I'm not asking you about the Riemann conjecture. So, uh, uh, even the uh, see, uh, professionals are split among themselves what it is about. I am uh, asking you about for, uh, about the, what uh, was your say, pri one of your primary businesses uh, in your long mathematical career, the question about limit cycles of real uh, ODEs on the plane. Yes, I, I want to say that uh, the situations are parallel. Uh, you uh, have uh, a straightforward question and uh, it seems to be um, sort of naive to ask what it is about, uh, it's clear what it is about, but uh, then uh, it occurs that it is quite difficult uh, to solve the question. So, these are two unfold. Uh, Hilbert problems, and uh, uh, I think that the situation is uh, parallel. Okay, so uh, Sergey, I had to turn off your microphone because there was an echo. I think. Uh, okay. If you want to turn on again, and. Uh... No, it's, uh, no, it's, well. Uh... <laughs> Basically, Yuli answered my question saying that there is no, uh, he has no uh, simple answer to this question. That's what I suspected, but, well, who knows, maybe. Uh... Okay. Okay. Uh, well, we are in time, actually. Then uh, any other question? Uh, a lot of you have done uh, written articles based on uh, uh, Ulich's articles, so <laughs> I'm sure uh, that uh, the people might have this question, but maybe they are a little bit uh, shy. Uh, well, uh, uh, saying I just want to, okay. Okay. to okay. The, the, the presence of Ulich for us is a honor, with this Camacho speaking. And uh, uh, I, I would like to make a, to pose a question about your descendants. Do you think that the, this group of research around uh, differential equations, especially around these uh, problems you, you, you raised today, are, will it still survive for one more generation? <clears throat> mm. I strongly hope uh, that uh, there are uh, several uh, students of mine uh, that uh, work uh, in the uh, same, in the close direction. Uh, Alexei Glutsuk uh, is uh, very active and uh, in his uh, uh, best age. Mm, and uh, Younger people uh, work also in the same direction, but uh, 
Mainly, I think that my students uh, will work in different areas of dynamical systems, not necessarily in the Hilbert 16th problem. Uh, this is uh, the same problem uh, with any of us, I guess. You also have uh, an answer to a similar question about your students. Sure. <laughs> good. Very good. Thank you. And actually, you already mentioned it's a kind of natural process that the students, they get, uh, they lose their interest to the original problems and they, they produce their own problems and so by generations, uh, uh, the interest change and change. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Uh, allow me to name uh, one of my uh, mathematical uh, descendants, uh, my uh, grandson, mathematical son of Sergei, uh, called uh, Guy Benjamini, uh, who started uh, exactly in the uh, domain that we are discussing and now is uh, continually changing and increasing his interests. Uh, he is currently far from the origin of his studies, but he is originally from uh, this mathematical source and obtains great mathematical results. And uh, uh, another student of Sergei and Sergei himself, Dmitry Novikov and Sergei, they are working not exactly in this uh, domain, but again, uh, in the filial domain. So probably I even should not like uh, that many students of mine will remain exactly in this domain. Uh, this is uh, not a uh, natural way of uh, scientific development from my point of view. Uh, for this reason, sometimes I think it's better to few people to do good history of mathematics to see how the things develop, how the interest change, and how the new problem arises, the old problems still, okay, get forgotten. Anyway, uh, let me see if there are, I, mean, I think we have a few minutes. Uh, uh, somebody wants to ask a question? Okay, maybe like the, the previous. Uh, Hello. Uh, I, Hello. <laughs> I have uh, I have a question. Okay. So, uh, uh, Yuli, you, you you were uh, for a long time you were sharing your life uh, your time between uh, Russia and Cornell in in US. Yes. So how did you survive to this without being uh, schizophrenic? <laughs> Oh, well, uh, I um, cannot um, answer this question, uh, but um, I will try to answer uh, another um, question. Uh, people told people in Russia told me that uh, their seminar uh, dies if they quit uh, the seminar for half a year. And working at Cornell, uh, I have quit my seminar uh, 20 times and uh, even more for a half a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to uh, avoid the extinction, uh, I organized uh, summer schools for my seminar. Uh, these were uh, 10 days of workshops uh, with the intensivity comparable uh, with one semester, one term. And uh, they elaborated the program of the work of the seminar for the coming uh, fall uh, when I am absent. And, uh, um, I, uh, uh, and the seminar survived. Uh, uh, Dmitry Anosov, who attended uh, my seminar uh, some years uh, uh, last uh, in, in the uh, last part of his life, he told me uh, probably uh, as a reproach that uh, without myself the seminar works even better than with me. And for me it was not a reproach but uh, quite a compliment. <laughs> Uh, and uh, what about my personal experience? I did like it very much. Uh, 
I uh, love um, Cornell uh, and uh, Ithaca as my uh, second uh, motherland. Uh, I know uh, the details, the paths, the beautiful places. Uh, and it was quite natural for me uh, to pass from one uh, life to another and back. Mm -hmm. Okay.